Hello everybody, my name is Dan Bigman and I am from LearnGPR.com and today I'm shooting a quick video to address a very specific uh, question or issue in engineering geophysics which is can ground penetrating radar detect corrosion uh, of rebar that are embedded in concrete. And so I'm shooting this video for good friends of mine at F Prime C Engineering. Uh, so if you're not seeing this video on their website, go to their website and check it out. It's fprimec.com. They have this incredible knowledge base about engineering and specifically about non-destructive testing. Uh, it's a wonderful resource. You should absolutely go, go see it. Um, but what we're going to deal with today is, is, is corrosion. So my friends over at F Prime C were wondering whether or not GPR can identify corroded steel reinforcements or not. And it's something that's kind of been up in the air with people. And I've seen in some of the groups in LinkedIn and things like that, people are unsure as to whether or not GPR actually can or cannot be used for this application. And I'm going to go ahead and go on record and say that I believe it can be used for this application. But like any application with ground penetrating radar, you always have to be careful of the limitations. And so what I'm going to quickly do for you now is sketch out the theoretical kind of foundation behind why GPR should be able to identify uh, corroded rebar in concrete. So for example, you have a concrete structure, and this is the top of your concrete, and you have a rebar, okay, that's a reinforcing steel that's embedded in the concrete, so here's the bottom of your slab, let's say. Um, what happens during the corrosion process is you get uh, a percentage area loss of your rebar. And so you get a conversion of the steel, which is refined metal, into um, iron oxide. And what happens is if this is the total right, diameter of your uh, rebar to begin with, you actually end up getting a smaller component that is the rebar. And all this extra area right, is corrosion. So a couple things happen then when the rebar uh, becomes corroded. First of all, you get reduction in the diameter of the, of the steel, but you get a couple of other physical changes to it. So steel, or highly conductive metal, tends to have a very high dielectric uh, constant, where corroded steel, uh, iron oxides, actually have a dielectric constant okay, of about 14. So concrete has a dielectric constant, let's say, of about um, 5. And steel will tend to have it okay, of about almost infinity. Right? Now that's debatable. Maybe there's nothing that's actually infinity. Uh, uh, however, the more polarizing the metal is, you know, then the closer it gets to infinity. So the point is here, it's, it's very, very high. Okay? So it's very, very high. So with a reduction in the dielectric constant, of the steel into iron oxide, there's less of a difference between the corrosion and the concrete. So as the GPR is coming across the concrete, let's say it's getting pushed this way, and it sends out a signal, okay, which bounces back off. Before this is corrosion, right, before it's corroded, you're going to get a very high percentage that's reflected off of the steel because the difference between five and almost infinity is going to be a lot. So maybe, you know, I don't know, 80 plus percent of your signal is going to be returning um, back to the surface. But if you get this reduction and the rest of this is corrosion, then you're going to get a lower, a smaller percentage that's reflected, right? So maybe it's 50 percent, okay? Right, because the difference between five and 14 is smaller than the difference between five and infinity. And so if you're getting a, a, a smaller percentage of the wave's energy that's being reflected back, right, you're gonna have a lower amplitude reflection at the ground surface, and that should show you then, you know, if you have, for example, uncorroded rebar here, and you're getting, right, 80 plus percent uh, of the signals returning, versus 50 plus, you know, or 50 or lower percent, uh, returning, you should be able to understand that difference right there. You should be able to see it. The GPR should be able to record that variation um, between non-corroded versus 
corroded uh, rebar, and this is the main reason why that uh, is the case. Um, however, there's a whole uh, uh, a second reason why you should potentially be able to identify uh, deteriorated concrete, certainly, but uh, corroded rebar, and that is that. Go ahead and just erase a little bit here for a second. Okay, is as your rebar gets corroded. That corrosion is actually going to continue to deteriorate the concrete itself. Okay, so it's going to go out right, from that corroded rebar okay, into the actual concrete. And so you're going to get a change in the actual physical properties of the concrete in addition to just the actual rebar. So what happens when the concrete right, goes from uh, a dielectric of, of 5 to a dielectric of something between 5 and 14, let's say, what happens to the wave speed? The wave speed is going to decrease, right? So the velocity will decrease as corrosion begins to infect the concrete. Because as the dielectric goes up, the wave speed is going to go down. And if you're not understanding everything I'm saying here, you can jump over to learngpr.com and put your email address in and get our free uh, um, introductory training video. It's completely free. All you got to do is put your email in. We're going to send it right to you. It's a 40-minute it's a video which talks all about physical properties of, of materials. It talks about wave speeds. Uh, it talks about how GPR works. So if you don't understand everything I'm saying, go there, put your email in, and we'll send you your, uh, uh, your free introductory training video 100% free. Okay, so back to our, our example. As the corrosion begins to infect the concrete around it, the velocity is going to go down. And so what you're going to end up having is uh, um, late arrivals of your, your, uh, of your EM wave, of your GPR wave. Right? So if you have an uncorroded area here, the GPR right, is coming, and maybe it takes two nanoseconds, Okay, but over here, it's moving slower, and so maybe it takes three nanoseconds, even though this rebar and this rebar are the same depths. It's going to take longer to identify this corroded rebar than it will this uncorroded rebar because of uh, uh, the concrete is being infected by the corrosion. So that's another, another issue. And what will happen then is, let me get one more time over here. Okay, is as you're collecting your data on the rebar, and let's say you have you know a bunch of uh, a rebar in here. Okay, what you're going to get, so let's say it's all the same depth. Okay, what you're going to get is a hyperbola for all the uncorroded rebar at the same two-way travel time, but on your corroded rebar. It's going to take longer for the signal to return. Okay. And so you're going to get uh, the uncorroded rebar coming back at the same time, but the corroded rebar taking longer uh, to actually return a signal. So that's another indicator that you have corrosion. Um, so, where is the limitation of using ground penetrating radar in this case? The, the limitation is if you have corrosion infecting with iron oxide, right, making its way throughout the concrete, and it consumes other rebar, right, you might get late arrivals here and here, even though the rebar might not be corroded, the wave may be moving slower over there. Uh, uh, take it longer to, to return. So it's something you have to be wary of, and every late arrival may not be a corroded, a corroded rebar. Um, uh, uh, but one thing I think is a benefit of GPR over the half-cell method, which is traditionally what's used to identify corrosion, um, one benefit of GPR versus the half-cell method uh, is that it doesn't give you a bulk average of what's below the the concrete surface, right? So every single wave, although it's spreading, it's got very short distances to travel, typically, 
um, to, the, to, to identify rebar, and you're using usually high frequency waves, um, which are going to have very high resolution, and that to me is a big benefit of ground penetrating radar over the traditional um, half cell method. Another benefit is GPR can actually map the rebar in three dimensions um, accurately, and so you can uh, use that to visualize corroded versus non corroded rebar. So I hope that this was uh, beneficial to you, and, um, and, and I hope you got something out of this. Again, pop over to learngpr.com. Uh, if, if, if you did get something out of this, if, if it's helped you understand why GPR sh should be able to uh, identify corrosion, then please share it around. You know, share it on social media. Share it with a colleague or, or, or a classmate or a friend who you think can benefit from this too. Uh, we appreciate your time all the time, and I will see you in the next video.